Hello everyone, Basil here from Techno Talk. I'm a little sick right now, so sorry if uh <coughs> ah, sorry if stuff like that happens. Uh today we're gonna be making a program. We're actually going to be ignoring my original plan for continuing the quadratic formula and uh I'll I'll get to creating Windows later using JFrame, but uh, right now we're actually going to make a random password generator, and I really don't know why, but I made this program because I was homesick and I was bored. It's called Password, and uh, so I thought, why not share it with you guys? Now, there's going to be a couple things about this uh, random password calculator. First off, is the fact that um, it's not going to be completely random because it's going to have uh, it's going to always be alternating letters and numbers so it's not just going to be a random number of letters and numbers because that would take too long so there is going to be an altering it's going to be like you know a random letter then a random number then a random letter then a random number and other things that we're going to in this program we're going to allow the user to say how many characters they'd like the password to be so we're going to start here by importing java.util asterisk and uh, usually whenever we import util we're doing scanner, but scanner is not the only thing in util. We're actually going to be using scanner and random in this program. So let's start by instancing our scanner. System dot in, and then our random. Uh, we're going to call it R just for the heck of it. So yeah, you haven't seen this before, but that's how you create a random. Oh, sorry, that's how you create a random object. So we're going to be using R to create random numbers. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a string array. Uh, we're going to call it alphabet. And the reason for this is because uh, Java is not going to know to make to take a random letter of the alphabet because it doesn't know what the alphabet is. So instead, we're going to have to create the alphabet, or in other words. Just uh, make an array with all the letters. J, K, L, M. I don't need to say the alphabet for you. You're not stupid. Or are you? J, K, J, K, guys. I'm sick. Oh my god. Q. I'm doing it again. All right, and almost done. Ah, it's not a Q. It's a W. And Z. Oh crap! Crap! All right, Z. And here's our alphabet. Now. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to have to... Crap, what's the next thing to do? Oh, we're going to go ahead and start by just making a header real quick. We're going to call it... Uh, random Password Generator. And then just because I want to, I'm going to put a bunch of underscores. Just to make it look cooler. Skip another line. Actually, don't skip a line. Who cares? And then what we're going to have is we're going to have system dot out dot print not print line, and we're going to say how many characters would you like the password to contain? Fancy. Put a tab after that. Oh crap. Put a tab after that backslash t, and then we're going to have uh, an input. So I guess this will be int. We're going to have a lot of integers now um, that we're going to have to define. So we'll call this int c and have it equal to scan.next int. God, I can't type. Okay, so c is going to be the uh, original number of characters. So the number of characters that the password in the end has should be the same as c. This is what the user is inputting. Now we're going to do a couple variations of c. Uh, actually, I think we're going to have three. Yeah, total of five. So we're going to have four different variations of c. We're going to have int n c, which is just going to be negative c, zero minus c. We're gonna have int nc2. Actually, first we're gonna have int c2, which is going to be um, c divided by two, and then we're gonna have int uh, nc2, which is gonna be zero minus nc. Uh, no, it won't be. This is gonna be zero minus c. Uh, hold up. <laughs> I'm trying to remember how this program works because it 
I remember making it complicated at first, and it doesn't have to be, but I decided to make it complicated. Yeah, that makes that sounds sounds right. No, wait, wait, wait. Zero minus. Uh, ah, zero minus C2. That makes sense, yeah. And then we're going to have int ncm, and that's going to be nc2. No, it's going to be <laughs> nc plus 1 divided by 2. So we're gonna you're you're gonna see uh, eventually what all of this means. It's all just for different reasons, but these are the different variations. So we have the original C, and then we're gonna have a negative C. We're going to have um so we we have original C, and then we have C divided by two, so half of C, and then we're gonna have a negative form of half of C and a negative form of C, and then the negative form of C added to one divided by two will be another variable. So. Let's start. Um, what we're going to need is we're going to have an if else statement because the problem with this is that it's going is that um, it, because we have letters and numbers, uh, it's always going to be looping through something twice. So it's going to have to be different code for even and odd numbers. So we're going to have to start with an if um, it's an even number. And in order to tell Java that something is an even number, we're going to have to say c mod two equal to zero. And what this means is that um, if you don't know what mod is, it's the little percent sign. Uh, it's the basic Java stuff, although I don't, I don't think I actually ever went over it. I realize now that I missed a lot of basic stuff. But pretty much this means that if you divide c by two, the answer to C mod 2 is going to be the remainder. So if the remainder is 0, that means it's always going to be an even number, right? Because think about it, any number to, uh, divided by 2, if it's even, it'll have a remainder of 0, and if it's not even, it'll have a, a remainder other than 0. So this is saying if it's an even number, we're going to do stuff, and then we're going to have an else, so whenever it's an odd number, we're going to do stuff. So let's start with the if it's an even number. We're going to have a for loop inside of the if. So we're going to have first int x equals nc uh, 2 so nc 2 if you recall is the negative form of c divided by 2 so you'll see why that's important in a second and then we're gonna have c my the c is uh, blah, x is less than 0 and then we're gonna have x plus plus and then in here we're going to have uh, what's it called Oh yeah, first we're going to have to uh, generate a random letter. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to have int alpha num. So this is going to be a number that will represent a letter in the alphabet. We're going to have it equal to r. Remember that's the random. Dot next int. This is, uh, oops, not bad. And then we're going to have 26 inside here. So what this does is this will actually... Um, take a random number from 0 to 25 because Java starts counting as 0 and uh, that's what we want. We don't want 1 through 26, we want 0 to 25 because an array is 0 through 25 so that's going to work. So it'll take a random number 0 to 25 and then what we're going to have it do is we're going to have it print out uh, not print line, just print alphabet alpha num so what this is going to do is um, remember this is an alphabet is an array so whatever's in the bracket is going to be the position in the array. Well, if we put alpha num in here, and alpha num is a random number between 0 and 25, it's going to take a random a position from 1 to 26 in the array, and it's going to print out that letter. So essentially what we've done here is we've created a random letter generator. And then we're going to have much simpler, just going to be int num num, num num, num num num. Uh, that was awkward. And we're going to have it... Uh, next int 10 so it'll be 0 through 9 it's all the digits and then we're just gonna print system dot out dot print num 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 so this is pretty much all we have to do here now the reason we had to divide c by 2 first so the reason we're using nc2 is because you see here that we're doing a random letter and a random number in this loop so every time it loops through it is going to um do it, it's going to do two things. So it's going to be printing two characters every time it loops, which means that if we were to have this as just negative of the original C, so like NC, then what would happen is it would say we entered 8, it would give us 16 characters because it would be doing it twice for each loop. So we had to divide it by 2 first. Now, the else is a slightly more complicated. Uh, we're going to pretty much copy this entire loop right here. Uh, but to do so we're going to copy this entire loop except that instead of nc2 we're going to use uh nc m so 
In other words, NCM is the original negative form of C. So say we entered 8, it would take a negative 8 and add 1 to it. So that becomes negative 7. So it will always be one less loop uh, than uh, we originally entered. And then it will divide that by 2. And the reason for that is because if we enter an odd number and you divide it by 2, because they're integers, it will act like it was a integer division. Or in other words... If I entered 7 and tried to do 7 divided by 2 with integer division, it would give me 3 because it doesn't do decimals. And it would uh, just take, it would eliminate the remainder and just give me the uh, integer. So the reason we're using NCM is because it's going to first take that odd number, turn it into an even number, uh, the actually lowest even number, and then divide it by 2. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loop it ah, half of that number of times. Uh, so that we end up with, say we entered 7, we'll end up with 6 characters, and then outside of the for loop, we're just going to, uh, we'll have to redo num num, num num, uh, r dot next int, system dot out dot print, num num, the reason we have to redo it is because we're, uh, talk, we're, blah, initializing it inside of this loop which means that outside of the loop it's not going to know what it is so we have to say it again and also this is because we need to create a new random number otherwise it would be the same number and then we're going to print it and so what this will do is it'll take six alternating letters and numbers randomly and then it'll add another random number at the end and it'll do the the six it'll be not six, I mean it'll do one less than what we entered for an odd number and then it'll add one to it in order to get the original number and then after all of this we can just have system dot out dot print line and we can just have hold on copy and paste god I hate being sick <clears throat> Blah. And there we go. Now, if we run this program, see what we've done. Sorry, I had to go a little fast. Say we wanted it to be eight characters. So we have random password generator. How many characters you'd like the password to contain? We say eight. It will give us a random eight characters. And if you notice, it's alternating letter, number, letter, number, letter, number. Now, let's run this again. Say we wanted seven. We would say 7, and it will give us 7, and you see here it'll be alternating letter, number, letter, number, letter, number, letter, number, and then it'll have another number at the end, and that will be it. So yeah, thanks for watching, sorry I had to go a little fast, but this has been a random password generator tutorial, and yeah, see you next time guys.